When I was in sixth grade, I moved with my family to Alaska. My best friend moved to London. Not sure if you've ever had a friend move away. In the military, it happened all the time. But I never got used to it. It was always hard to say goodbye. I wanted to see my friend. So I asked my parents if I could go fly to London. Not sure if you've ever known any 13-year-olds to ask if they could go to London by themselves or another country, or how many parents would say yes. Well, my parents said, you know what? If you can earn your own way, we'll let you go. Now, they might have thought this was a safe answer. How many 13-year-olds can save up that kind of money? I saw it as a challenge. Alaska, the winters are long, so I shoveled driveways and rooftops for money all winter. By May, which is the end of winter, I had enough saved up. I'm sure my parents were surprised, but true to their word, they let me go by myself. They couldn't go with me. They didn't have the money for that. So I went by myself. At the age of 13, to London. Traveling in the 90s was a lot of fun. The flight attendants knew I was a 13-year-old kid flying by himself. <laughs> they took good care of me. This was back in the day when they would drop down these screens in the middle of the aisles and we'd watch the in-flight movie together as a, as a whole airline. It's like a flying movie theater. It's kind of fun that way. One of those movies that I still remember was Uncle Buck. John Candy. Well, I loved this experience, and I, and I landed in England. My friend was there. He was excited to see me. He took me straight to the rugby field. <laughs> I had never played rugby before, so I, I wanted to watch a little bit of it to see what, you know, how you play. And within about five minutes, I was asleep. Jet lag. There were a lot of firsts in this experience, this trip. But it was amazing. One of the best trips of my life. We visited all these different sites all across England, like Stonehenge. I gotta walk through Stonehenge. I gotta touch it. You can't do that right now. I gotta visit all these castles and palaces. <laughs> we were living the life. I even got to see Les Miserables at West End of the best productions I'd ever seen in my life. To this day, one of the greatest productions ever. After two weeks of being in London, I go home. And there wasn't a lot of ways to communicate with my family while I was gone. We, I probably was able to make one phone call because it was expensive to make these long distance phone calls across the country, across the world. So my, my parents just had to hope and pray that I was okay. It's a big risk on their part, and a big risk on mine as well. But it was actually pretty amazing because I got to learn at, at that age the value of taking risks, the high rewards that come from it, the value of earning your own way. My parents let me do that. That was amazing. And ever since that time, I've always been a risk taker. I've always been willing to charge into the unknown with all reckless abandon, which is why I'm the world's leading expert <laughs> at getting it wrong the first time, the king of almost. But it's also why I've lived with every broken bone I swear I lived. Like William Wallace says, every man dies, but not every man really lives. Life is short, it goes by in a blip. If you don't start living it now, It'll slip right through your fingers.